Hi, my name is Dr Kate Ringham and I am the Programme Lead in Applied Accounting at Oxford Brookes Business School in Oxford Brookes University. And the purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about a structure that you might adopt for reflective writing within your skills and learning statement. We have produced a video that talks about um, self-reflection and why that's a good thing. So please do and go, go and look at that video for a little bit more about what reflective writing is. This is about how you might structure your reflective writing. So just to remind you, the skills and learning statement is a maximum of 2000 words addressing two questions. The first question is how have you developed personally and professionally as a result of undertaking the research and analysis project and how will you how will the experience of the RAP help you in the future? And um, as I've mentioned in the previous video, the assessment criteria for self-reflection is assessed on a pass-fail basis. So we're not looking to grade the quality of your experience. We just need to see evidence that you are capable of self-reflection. The area that people are most likely to fail on is where they describe events. So the structure that you adopt in your skills and learning statement is looking to really encourage you to um, demonstrate that skill of reflection. So identifying your own strengths and weaknesses and personal development. How have you learnt? How is the experience of the RAP going to help you in the future? Um, so please do um, avoid describing lots of things. Um, so the possible structure, and this is one way of thinking about your experience, is a very, very brief description. So we've got a bit of context, but then thinking about how you interpret and evaluate that and what that means for the future. So you might briefly describe the insight and briefly describe the circumstances. But I do emphasize that um, it is brief. We, are, we do not need lots of description. You then might think about why this is significant to me, because in answering the question about how have you developed personally and professionally, you're really starting thinking about what is the significance of this insight? What factors have influenced maybe your previous learning, your personality, um, and really do think about making connections between the experience that you've had and the research and analysis project. The most important thing about the skills and learning statement is that it's personal. We should get a real flavour of you and how you've learnt in this journey. Um, the relevance of the insight uh, when you're thinking about evaluating the relevance of insight for your professional development and the consequences to you. So the second question that we're asking you is really trying to really pull out that sense of what does this mean for the future? in the future when you're transferring your knowledge that you've gained through the experience um, that you will really think about how the experience has helped you. So question one, what have you learnt? Um, how have you developed personally and professionally as a result of undertaking the research and analysis project? So you're really thinking about how you have learnt. This is about um, understanding how the experience has helped you develop. Um, so what new skills have you acquired? How did you go about developing them? What are the challenges you faced and how have you overcome them? We really aren't looking for a description of the meetings you had with your mentor. We're thinking about how you learnt from those. So prior to starting the RAP, um, when you're thinking about your personal and professional um, your skills, you maybe um, think about your own strengths and weaknesses in the area of IT or research skills. How strong did you assess your own communication skills or possibly your verbal communication skills? Because remember, the presentation is a real opportunity to develop those verbal communication skills. And how have these skills developed during the research and analysis project? How have you learnt and what were the experiences and challenges you faced? So we're really thinking here about how you have learnt. 
And if we look at this example here, preparing the wrap um, made me think in different ways. So that's explaining how you learnt. Um, and then we, the person has expanded it on that. After four years of studying the ACCA syllabuses, revising and sitting exams, which is quite a regimented structure. So here the student has analysed their previous learning pattern and compared it to what they've done in the wrap because they said, well, actually, to do the research and analysis project, I needed to think creatively and use my own initiative. Um, and I have found mind maps help me to see connections between ideas. So when you're thinking about how you learnt, you're providing examples there of um, what you did and how you um, developed the skill. And then in question two, when we're thinking about the future, having completed the research for the RAP, I realised I'm interested in the connections between business and financial performance. Long time, a uh, long term, I think I might, I'd like to understand more about business strategy. And then that, what does that mean in terms of your employability? Gain some experience in mergers, maybe as either as an advisor or within a company. So you're beginning to think about how has my insights, the insights I've gained from doing the research and analysis project, helped me formulate maybe a career path or a changing career path or um, given me some possible opportunities and ideas about future study. Um, so in terms of question two, the future, um, this particular reflection here is thinking about what finance professionals need in terms of their skills. So thinking about the, um, the non-technical skills, the soft skills that finance professionals need, a bit of a reflection on how working with your mentor may have helped you develop the skills needed to um, those non-technical soft skills needed in the future. Um, so the, in this reflection, you can see that the, the student is saying, well, I was very nervous and I didn't want to ask questions. Um, understandably, because they thought the mentor might think that they weren't prepared. But they are then saying, actually, what happened was that meant I spent a lot of time um, worrying about how to work things out and realised that actually I should have had more confidence and asked questions in the meeting. So what happened then? Well, in the second meeting, I was much more prepared to ask thing about things I didn't understand. And that shows how you've um, developed through the experience.